What's up everybody? This is Split Shot with the Heart of Florida. And one of the really important things to know about Florida whenever you're hunting is how to utilize the quota system, what the quota system is. And that's kind of what we're gonna go through on this video today. The reason we have a quota system and that is a limitation to how many hunters can go onto a, onto a piece of property. And the reason that affects people is we don't wanna go in and have you know 20 guys trying to fight for one one turkey or one deer or one area to go in there and, and hunt. So if you're around these bigger cities, most of those are gonna have quotas on those properties. And then if you go into more rural areas, you can find places that are open or if they're really big properties, they can be open to the public for you to go in and hunt with just your regular hunting license. But if you're out there on a small property, let's say you're hunting a 2000 acre property, then there's only so many people that can be able to hunt that property you know, efficiently at the same time. So what Florida has is a limited entry quota system that allows there only to be so many hunters that they regulate on that property. So how do you get into the quota system? How do I apply and how, what do I need to know about it? The application period starts May 15th and it goes through June 15th. And that's coming up here soon. And we wanted to make sure that we got this video out to you. That way you know what to do whenever this first phase of the quota system happens. And you hear me say the word first phase, there are different phases of it. First phase is really important to make sure that you put in for because that's where you get your weighted points that are gonna help you to be successful in actually drawing one of these permits later down the road. So most of the permits take several points to be able to get if you're trying to get on a really high quality property. That's one of the, the things that I try to do personally is try to hunt these better properties if, if it's available. Like I said, you can go on places that are walking on, but there's gonna be more pressure there's gonna be a lot more hunters and there's you know usually less game on those places for the most part. So when you go on these other permits or on these quota permits, uh, you have a better opportunity of being able to take some game. So in phase one, it's so important to be able to put in because you are getting these, what they call preference points. And preference points are like a weighted, a weighted point system that allows you over time, that way they're not drawing the same people through a lottery system to be able to draw for or be able to draw one of these hunts. So if you go several years without getting a permit in first phase, you get a preference point. And each preference point that you have, say we have four or five, that is gonna help you to be able to draw one of these better permits or one of these like properties. Um, so just know, like don't give up whenever you're putting in for them and you get discouraged. You go a couple of years without getting a quota permit. Don't get discouraged and, and put in for something that you don't really want, like a property that you don't really want. Okay, let's talk about how the point system works. You only get points if you are not drawn in phase one. If you apply in phase two or phase three, or even on the reissues, you're not gonna receive a point. You only get one point for each season, archery, muzzleloader, for phase one each year. So if you apply for a place in phase two, that's all 100% lottery for those that didn't get drawn in phase one. So you're not gonna get a point, or if you apply for reissues or in phase three, you're not gonna get a point if you don't get drawn then. You only get it in phase one. And again, that happens May 15th through June 15th. So you gotta make sure that you put in. You don't wanna miss that. And I believe that there's a stipulation also, if you miss like two years, you actually go back to zero, that they take your points away. And the reason points are so important is because when they do these drawings, you're gonna get a number and your number is gonna pop up and they're gonna look at the drawing. We'll say there's 100 people that applied for Palmetto Patch WMA. Well, Palmetto Patch WMA only has 10 permits. And out of those 100 people, there's 10 people that have five preference points. And those people with five preference points are gonna get those 10 points. Anybody else, is going to end up being on the bottom side of it but those five get preference over anything if there's 15 permits and there's 10 people that have five preference points and there's uh, 20 people that have four preference points what's going to happen is in that drawing you're going to draw the top five or top 10 that have the five preference points and then the, the people with four preference points are going to go into a lottery so not all of them are going to draw it's just going to be whoever wins that lottery draw during that period of time. 
and then everybody else isn't going to be included in that drawing like you're eliminated right off of rip out of that wma so then what we go into is you're just phase two and phase three those are a hundred percent lottery phase two is for people who didn't get drawn into phase one but if you did get drawn in phase one you're not even going to be in the phase two drawing phase three is a first come first serve and then you go into your reissues and then that is 100% lottery on your reissues. So that doesn't mean that you're gonna get these places. That's why it's so hard to get them and make sure that you apply in phase one for the places that you really want to hunt. If you get discouraged along in there and you've got five preference points and the place that it takes you to get is six preference points and you decide, hey, I'm not gonna apply for that because I never get it and then I drop down and I'm gonna hunt a place that only takes two, well, they're gonna take your two preference points and the three that you had accumulated, they're gonna take the entire five, even though it only took you for two, or two to be able to draw that place. So it's important not to get discouraged whenever you're applying for these better properties. It's gonna take you a couple of years to be able to get on them most of the time, unless you're able to draw it in a reissue or if you're lucky, you got a buddy that's really awesome and he drew it and then you're able to go hunt with him on that guest permit. So there's some other ways to be able to go hunt. The ways to be able to go hunt on other properties that are still limited entry and it's still gonna have not be open to the general public overall. There are recreational properties. Recreational properties, you will pay a fee. Usually it's a few hundred dollars to be able to hunt those and you're, you're going to go into a limited entry, you get drawn, and then you pay the money, whatever it is, let's say it's $500, you pay the $500, and then you'll be able to hunt that property for the season, um, for the entire deer hunting season, whatever that season is that runs. And then you also can hunt turkeys and small game during that property. It allows you, it's almost like a private lease, but it is limited entry. And there's some other benefits, like most of those properties allow you to be able to drive four wheelers on. I'm not gonna say all of them, but you gotta look at your WMA, but usually there are some benefits to being able to draw those recreational permits. The other thing is there are also places that are called special opportunities. And the way special opportunities work is you put in $5 per application, and those applications are gonna go into a lottery system and you may put a hundred dollars in you may put five dollars in and you could get drawn but if you put a hundred dollars into it you have a better chance of being able to draw those permits these permits are transferable and what that means is i can hand that permit to anybody they're able to take that to the check station and they're they're able to hunt that property so say you you drew one you you paid the five dollar for the application you got drawn. Normally there's like a hundred dollar fee. Um, it could be, I think uh, the highest I've seen is like 175 if it's a turkey permit. And you'll pay that for, for that permit. So you'll pay the, five, the application fee that you put in for, and then you pay for, I won this award, I wanna take it, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy this permit, and you'll pay the hundred dollars for that permit, and then that is your permit. Now you can hand it to somebody else and they're allowed to go hunt on those. So that's where that transferable, your regular quotas are not. So if you draw them in that free first phase or phase two, like those aren't transferable. Only the person who drew it and then whoever comes with them on a guest permit is allowed to go on it. When you're applying in phase one, they're, they're gonna ask you, it's in a little bitty letters, if you wanna be entered into an antlerless deer drawing. Not every property is gonna have an antlerless deer drawing. So don't think just because like you put into it, I'm never getting drawn. Well, maybe you're not putting in for properties that do these antlerless deer drawings. Whenever you do get these, what happens is usually it's a, like around September, they have an individual drawing for the phase one applicants only. So if you drew a reissue, you are not going to be in this antlerless deer drawing. Or if you got it in phase two, you're not going to be in the antlerless deer drawing. Phase one applicants that have said, hey, I want to be in the, in the antlerless deer drawing that year. In September, they will go down and draw names out of the hat. And those people will get a, a deer permit if they are awarded it for antlerless deer. And that 
is still part of the five the five deer that you take in the state like it's not an added deer or a bonus deer this is just allowing you sometimes it allows you to take an antlerless deer during gun season or muzzleloader season that wouldn't be normal some properties only allow does to be harvested during archery with one of these antlerless deer permits uh, so it's important that you understand that side of it another thing to look into is look at the property that you're hunting look at the regulations that are going on because you might be able to hunt does during archery without having to have an antlerless deer permit like you can still hunt them during archery on certain properties so just make sure you look at the regulations of where you're going the other thing about these antlerless deer permits again they are transferable so if i go hunting and i'm allowed to have a guest permit on my quota i take my buddy with me and we're hunting together and I'm not interested in, in, in shooting an antlerless deer, but I can hand that permit over to my buddy and then he would be able to hunt that antlerless deer with that permit in hand. So it's something that you can transfer between hunters that you're going with. You can even hand it to somebody at the check station. A lot of times you can go to these check stations and maybe somebody's not interested in taking an antlerless deer and they'll leave a, leave a permit at the check station. So make sure that you're talking to the check station attendants be friendly with the people at the check station and the hunters at the check station and you might make friends and be able to pick up deer permits or even go as a, as a buddy with somebody okay the next thing that we want to go into is how to return your permit say that you can't make that hunt that you drew in first phase if you drew a, a hunt in first phase and let's say your wife comes up with a wedding that you absolutely have to be, be at and you, you can't get out of it and you're not gonna be able to make that hunt and you're able to tell before, I believe it's two weeks, you have to, 10 days, something like that, you have to have, return these permits. If you send them back, you're able to get that point and you can still go to build it and maybe even draw the same place the next year. So what you do is there's a drop down on on where you actually got have your quota your quota and your limited entry hunt on fwc's website and then you can click on that and then there's a spot to return it if you wait until that 10 day period beforehand then you're not going to be able to return it and get that point back well what happens when that permit gets returned it goes into a reissue drawing and then that's where a hundred percent lottery every week when these returns come in they're actually coming back up. So somebody who doesn't have any points or didn't draw a quota um, through the first couple of phases is actually able to draw a quota, maybe even a better a quota than what they actually have. So you just wanna keep up with that stuff. Make sure that you're, you're utilizing your points in the best way possible. So in the breakdown, just make sure that you understand that each season, archery season, muzzleloader, general gun is gonna have its own like special application that you're gonna apply for. So if you're interested in only muzzle loading and you don't wanna go archery hunt or you don't wanna be out there with general gun hunters, make sure that you only apply just for the muzzle loader because that is taking an opportunity away from somebody else if you're applying for stuff that you're not gonna hunt. So remember that whenever you're applying for this thing because that's how our system gets overloaded. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is there are gonna be exemptions to needing a quota on certain properties. Not all properties require everybody to be able to have a to have that quota, the quota permit. Usually these are a little bit larger properties where people can spread out. Um, and the people that are exempt from this would be people that are over 65. If you're under 16, if you have a disability permit, through the state for hunting and fishing, like then you are able to be exempt on these certain properties. Make sure the property says that there is an exemption. If you're active in the military and you're a Florida state resident, then you also will qualify for an exemption if you're at home on leave for less than 30 days. And you can check your, your WMA brochure. It'll say for that period of time, it'll usually show that there's a quota permit and then it'll say if there's a a non-exemption or if there's an exemption. If it says there's an exemption, then those people are free to be able to go hunt those properties without having to apply for the quota permit. The next thing to remember, on the application, it'll ask you if you wanna apply as an individual or if you wanna apply as a group. 
And if you want to go just hunt with a buddy, then you're able, you're able to apply as an individual and then you get a guest permit to be able to bring a buddy along. And he'll have to have that piece of paper with him to show that he's hunting with you and who, like who he's hunting with and what days that he's re allowed to be able to hunt there. But if you wanna hunt with five buddies and you're trying to hunt a particular place, then you're allowed to be able to apply as a group. And you can only apply up to five members of your group, but you'll have a group leader and that group leader will get a number and then he can hand that out to whatever members that he wants to be in that group. And then you can apply all as one and then draw the same quota and be able to hunt together with your buddies. The thing to remember about that, the group leader will say he's been applying for a place for three years and he's got three preference points. And then he adds a buddy on that has zero preference points. That means the entire group has zero preference points. Just because the, the group leader has a lot of points himself, when he applies as a group, it goes down to the, the minimum amount of preference points in the group. So that's an important thing to remember. You don't wanna you know, expect to get something and then you add somebody on and then you don't get it because you added a buddy in and then you don't get to go on that hunt that year and you have to wait several more years to be able to hunt together. One more really quick thing, we've gone covered most of the general deer hunting and your, your hog hunts and even your family hunts and your youth hunts. One more thing that I wanted to go into is alligators are kind of their own special little deal. So alligators don't have, even though they do have different phases, phase one is 100% lottery. And for the alligators, you, you have to have it tied over to a money account. Like if it's a credit card or if it's a, you know, a bank account, they're gonna pull that out and they're gonna make sure that you have the, I think it's like $275 for an alligator, for two alligator tags, um, but the alligator permit itself, like it's like $275 and it'll cover those two tags, but they're gonna make sure that you have that money in your account before you're even allowed to get drawn. But those alligator permits are 100% lottery and the date on that is May 3rd, through May 13th. So it's a different application period. You wanna make sure that you put in for it. Um, you can also draw alligator permits. If you don't get drawn in phase one, there are a phase two and a phase three. Phase three is first come, first serve, whatever's left over that, didn't, that people didn't apply for, like you're able to get them in phase three. Um, just wanna make sure I covered alligators. This is a basic breakdown of your quota hunt. Thank you guys for tuning in. Like and subscribe to our channel, and we're glad to see you in the heart of Florida.